Oh, shit. Bailey, you ready? Um, ish. Look at me, I told you it would work. You never failed to surprise me, Bailey. Hello there, my name's Bailey Plasco. And I'm Poppy Skillings. And welcome, welcome to, to In, In The, the Mix. Mix. Follow us. It's great to be back here in the studio, isn't it? It is, it is, and we've got some water. Which is absolutely brilliant considering the length of this show today. Coming up on today's show. <laughs> so, Ross and Jade went to explore the underground music scene here in Birmingham. As usual, we'll be bringing you the latest instalment in the Plask vs Poppy Challenge. And we all love spending time with our pets. It was all fun and games when we met Andrea down at the Blue Cross Pets Home to explore the process of rehoming. There were so many friendly faces there. And as usual, we want you guys to get involved with today's show. So tweet us at In The Mix Official under the hashtag Perfect Pet Pictures with some of the pictures of your pets and we will get some of them read up later in today's show. And as usual, we'll be bringing you some music this afternoon. We're joined by Iota. There they are. Who will be performing their new single, Fountain of Youth. That's all still to come, though. So for now, grab some snacks, sit back and relax. So the other day, we sent Jade and Ross down to Digforth to explore the underground music scene. Let's find out what they've been up to. The Rainbow Venues is renowned for being one of the greatest live music venues here in Birmingham. Located in the heart of Digbeth, right next to the iconic Custard Factory, it is the heart and the soul of what is making Birmingham an amazing place to be. However, in November, due to a drug-related issue, Birmingham City Council had no choice but to revoke the licence of Rainbow Venues. But today we've come down to Digbeth, a host of some of the best parties you can find here in the UK. We're going to be meeting with some sellers a collective of young creatives pushing forward Birmingham's underground music scene and still putting on events regardless of Rainbow's closure. Right, so we're here at the Old Crown down in Digbeth with Sun Cellar. Hi guys, how you doing? Not too oh, bad, not too bad, all good. We want to know what inspired you to start putting on events in Birmingham? Uh, well, it started, it started first when, um, like, obviously this is like one half and there's, like, there's more of us in some cell How many is there in total? There's six. Uh, George, you, King. Yeah. Probably about yeah. seven yeah, or eight. Six, seven. Seven. Yeah. They have, you have some coming in and out and you put like, them yeah. from the start and that. Yeah, so like, we was at Outlook, I think, 2014. And, uh, I don't know, we was just... But ended up bumping into a couple of lads from Birmingham that all you run night called uh, CD Sonics. And then um, uh, we just thought, he's like, if these lads can do it, then like, we and could do it. Yeah, yeah. Because what we know more, like, what we feel like we know more anyway, like, and the, what people want from Birmingham, like, the music mm. scene and that. And, uh, so, what do you think people do want in the music scene in Birmingham? What is it about it that's. Like, makes it sort of special? Like, what is it about I think it's more like the rawness that, like, mm. I don't think people like all that fake persona yeah. of like yeah, what people yeah. think of the music scene. Like we just come in, throw a party, we're all ourselves. Just keep it basic as yeah, easy as you can. Yeah, as you can yeah. With you guys, like it's definitely a lot more. It seems, I think, it seems that way. Whether I don't, I don't think you intend to do that so much. It just sort of happens, and you don't do anything yeah. special to make it that way. Yeah, it's quite an honest. Like, yeah, every, just, I've been to three of your events now, and every time I've been, it's quite like an honest event. But one thing I do want to know though is like, how did you come up with the name Some Seller? Like, yeah. Where does that stem from? It's it's literally, simple. the name, man. One like, <laughs> We got invited, <laughs> we got invited to a, a party in the jewelry quarter, right. and uh, yeah. it was like through a friend of a friend, and he was like, a, he was like, yeah, like, you have to be invited to go there. It's like a some secret location sort of thing. Right. Like the venue was like illegal, you can't sell alcohol there. It's just like, and then uh, we got there, we seen the venue. As soon as we seen the venue, it was like, this is where like, we need to start. And uh, as soon as we got back, we just like racking our brains like. We want to set up an event Where anyway. Like, what do you call it? What do you call it? Because we had already had that booked in that venue, it's like it's 
literally just a party. <laughs> it's just a sunset. That's the only way to describe it. It's a sunset. He just rolled with that. And then, <laughs> then now so. you've obviously. So obviously it started in Birmingham, but you guys have been. Bridge to 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 Bridge I know you went to spring break, that in That's Amsterdam, Amsterdam yeah. and then you also last year went to Budapest. Budapest yeah. yeah. These lads, these are, the, <laughs> these are the main lads really, do you know what I mean? Mm. These are the ones that everyone vibes us. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's been good for us, like you say, from like, just being in Birmingham to then for all them places you listed up, to go and DJ in them places, it's mad for yeah. us. Yeah. And like, for all of us to do it together as well, just to experience Yeah, I saw things. some of the footage from crazy, like, Amsterdam, it yeah. looked yeah. insane. Like, what was the main club that you guys played in? No, 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 no. That's probably the biggest place we've yeah. played. To sum it all up, then, lads, what, out of all the some summer events that you've all put on, what's each of you, what's your favourite one that you've done? Tough question. Tough question. First up, every single one we've done, and everyone yeah. has every single one has progressed. It's like progressed, then. Yeah. The vinyl one with his Oh, Just man. Just because yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 people yeah. came yeah. with. Madame, 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 Madame X's Madame one as well. Yeah. That was nuts, man. She's so sick. Yeah, quite a good one, man. A couple of names. That was all last year as well. I think that is enough. summer up, yeah. That was some. Hey! Some hey! Some <laughs> set it up, yeah. <laughs> Away from the clubs of Broad Street, amongst factories and workshops, there is so much going on in Digbeth musically. With a range of people pushing different sounds and putting on events, but most importantly, doing it for the culture, it really has the potential to be something special. A nice little V2 that one, wasn't it? That was. I've been to Rainbow before. I actually really miss it. Brings back so many shades of fresh and miss it a lot. Yeah. Right, now it's time for today's show that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> of course, Bailey is talking about the Plastic vs Poppy Challenge, where he and I go head-to-head -to, -head to win that most prestigious in the mix crown. Today's challenge involves food and a battle of the <laughs> taste buds. That's right. Th this... Bleh, sorry. That's right. Yesterday <laughs> evening, Bailey and I went on a little ingredients hunt for you guys at home, and here is what went down. It's Monday evening. You know the drill. We're going into Tesco now to go and grab some ingredients. Looking all happy and friendly at the moment, <laughs> but it's going to be very competitive in a minute. Time to head inside. OK, so my idea for this challenge is to get really weird uh, textured things. So we hopefully won't guess what it is. So, first of all, I've got this stuff, which I eat at home, it's really nice, but uh, it tastes a bit interesting and it's got a weird texture, so we'll see. All right, first item, we're going to give Poppy a break. Kit Kat Chunky Cheesecake, get in my basket. Oh, he's there. Hmm. So I think the first or the second thing I'm going to get are going to be these, because Again, a weird texture and uh, a taste that most people know but can't identify, I hope. So we'll see. Now look, I reckon I'm panning this on a plate to Poppy. It's actually hotter than it looks, going to pick food from a store. But next up, we're going to go for Jaffa Cakes. So the last thing I'm getting Bailey is this, which I hope is going to have a really horrible texture. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how he reacts. Right, it's obvious, Poppy has definitely got me disgusting food, so you know what, I'm just gonna do her a favor, get us something lovely to eat. We're gonna go for a final product of cheese twists. Successful shopping trip? Yeah, you have to wait and see. Bit nervous now, back to us in the studio. Right, you guys at home look at what Poppy and I force each other, but we don't. So in today's challenge, we're gonna take it in turns to be blindfolded and feed each other food. That's right, it's best out of three, and you guys know the drill. Each piece of food guessed correctly will be awarded one point. Are you ready for this? Ready as always. Let the games begin. Let's do it. You pop your blindfold right, on. Put it on. Over oh, the glasses. Over the glasses. I completely oh. forgot I was even wearing them. That's how natural I am to them. Right. Right. Let's do your first one. Don't now, take is this a peek. something in hand, or are you going to put it in my mouth? It will or be what's in hand. Happen? So today we have I'm ready. this. Okay. Pop your hand out. Here we go. Cover your other food back up. What is it, my friend? Bumpy texture. I'm gonna go pecan. <sighs> no, unfortunately not. What was it? That was a walnut. Right, no problem. Very close, me. very close though. Pop your, pop your blindfold on. Pop your mid blindfold on. And for everyone at home, this is what Poppy is gonna be eating next. Oh, oh. I'm gonna scared. put it in your hand. Oh. There you go. Oh, oh it's quite big. Oh, hold on. 
Give it a taste. What is that one? Mmm. Is it a slice of chocolate? It is. Is it? Kit Kat? It is indeed a Kit Kat. Yeah. One nil to you. Woo! Right. Back off. I'm going to put mine on. And I, I've seen it underneath this little thing, but I believe yeah. that's what you're going to feed me next. Oh, well, you never know. I think I might go for this one. It is. Right, how are you feeding it to me? <laughs> I'm going to go by spoon. It is okay. lovely. Are you ready, Bailey? <laughs> Open wide. Oh, God. <laughs> is it covered up? Um, yeah. <laughs> I have no clue what that was. That was A, it was disgusting. <laughs> B, I'm just going to take a wild guess. Cold mushy peas? Ah, uh, it wasn't. Look at that, it's beautiful. It it's, was. It looks grimmer. Leafy spinach in water. Is. Right. My last one? Your final go. You can actually take all, all the points here. I could, I could. Only if I get it right. You I'm could. ready. Right, here we go. That's what Poppy's got to eat. And I'm sure the, the texture might even give it away. Yeah, I totally know what this is. Um, let me taste. Take a bite. Bite just in case. Jaffa cake. It is indeed right. a Jaffa cake. Poppy has won today's class versus Poppy challenge, everyone. Don't even need to do the last one. You don't indeed. I'm going to brag about this to my parents. Now, <laughs> every year, more than one million households give away their pets for adoption. For some, it seems as though looking after a lovable animal is too much to ask. And so Poppy and I visited Blue Cross Pets Home to explore this in a little more detail. Blue Cross for Pets here in Bromsgrove is home to various breeds of cats and dogs that have been rehomed for changing circumstances. And we're here today, we're with Andrea, and she's going to show us around, hopefully meet some of the dogs, some of the cats. Yeah, you're going to meet Luna and Mabel, two of our dogs, so up home in, and a trio of kittens, Alvin, Simon and Theodora. <laughs> Lovely. Um, as your colleague said, um, we do we home pets through change of circumstances, um, hopefully finding new loving homes for them. Um, because as our tagline says, um, pets change lives, we change theirs. <laughs> so if you'd like to come with me, I'll show you around the centre. Sure. I'd love to. How old is she? Uh, she's two years old. So she's still only a youngster, so learning everything about the world still. And what kind of family would you recommend specifically for Mabel or Stafford in general? To be fair, they're individual dogs. I mean, Mabel could live with kids, cats, dogs, um, um, really a mixture. And to be fair to most Staffies, it's the same with all breeds. It's down to the individual dog. Staffies are just big softies who just want love and attention. Just quite a stigma against their breeds that all oh, can't live with children, but they're, they're not like that at all. No, any dog can... Um, little kids um, as long as they are um, happy around them um, and so is any dog that can not like kids. Um, it's literally down to how they're brought up and um, what kids have possibly done to them in the past. So this is Luna and she is Hello, a two-year-old colleague. <laughs> As you can see, she is very, very playful. Two years old? Just two years old. Mm. So she is definitely full of energy, full of fun. And Luna actually has some really good news. She had people come and view her today. Okay. And they say they want her. Lovely. So she's Luna. got a home lined up. So we're now here at the kitten unit and we're here with the youngest residents of the home and we're actually going to go inside and meet them now. So to even be out with us, cuddling up, getting in our hands, very confident to be able to do that. They're very intelligent animals. So uh, thank you for having us to, to stay for the day. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed meeting everybody, especially Luna and Mabel. They're equally lovely. And Luna's still excited jumping about. It's been great seeing all the different animals and hopefully we'll get to see you in the studio soon. Do we know who you're bringing yet? So that is going to be a surprise for you on the day. And after the filming of that VT, we actually found out that Luna was happily rehomed and Mabel has been reserved. And we're lucky enough to be joined in the studio here by Andrea. Thank you for coming. Nice to be here. And how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Good, good.
Now, you promised us a special guest the other day, but unfortunately, you have told us that he wasn't able to make it. Who are you going to bring, and what's his story? Uh, I was going to bring Fidget the Greyhound, and fortunately, unfortunately, he's been rehomed. He's been rehomed? Yeah. That's good for him. That's good for him. That's good for him. <laughs> and last year, you guys at the Blue Cross rehomed about 700 pets. So, how are your figures stacking up for this year? Going well so far, about 180 dogs and 150 cats and even some small furries. Oh, very lucky. So take us through that process for everyone at home who obviously wasn't with us on the day of filming. What is the process when an animal comes into you guys and how does it go from there? So first step is getting as much history as possible from whoever's bringing the animal in. Okay. Um, then they start to go through our assessment process so we can find out their personalities, what they're looking for in a home. And then once we've found out a bit about that, then they start to advertise themselves on the website. And who was your latest addition to this collection? Uh, Jack to Jack Russell. It's good to hear. Well, it's been lovely chatting to you, Andrea, today. And to anyone at home who's actually interested in rehoming a beautiful pet, just like Mabel, check out the Blue Cross website at www.bluecross.org.uk. <laughs> or alternatively, you can ring the Bromsgrove Centre themselves on 0300 777 1460. Now, earlier on in today's show, we asked you guys to send in pictures of your pets and the responses so far have actually been immense. This photo has actually been sent in by Sam and it's his yellow Labrador, conveniently named Poppy. You know what, Poppy, now you've said that, I can actually see the resemblance between you two. <laughs> You're evil. I did actually used to be blonde, so it kind of works. <laughs> this next one has actually been sent in by our producer, Victoria. They're looking nice and cute over there. <laughs> and she did fall in love with this dog, much like you and Splodge. We did get along, me and Splodgy. If the picture does come up, there we are, nice <laughs> and cute and cuddly. He was a character. And finally, this one over here. Oh it's my God, Finch. that's my dog. Uh, <laughs> I guess my mum sent that in. Thanks, mum. Thanks to Poppy's mum. Anyway, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for for today's show. Thank you for all tuning in. If you have, I've been Bailey Plasco. And I've been Poppy Skillings. And Iota, take it away. <laughs>
whole day. 